This is section 4.4, adding and subtracting like fractions, least common denominator, and equivalent fractions. We're going to look at like fractions and unlike fractions. Like fractions are just those that have the same denominator or a common denominator. Unlike fractions have different denominators. Here are two fractions that are like, 2 fifths and 4 fifths, since they both have a denominator of 5. Also, 5 sevenths and negative 3 sevenths both have a denominator 7. Some unlike fractions would be 2 thirds and negative 3 fourths, since they have different denominators. Also, 5 sixths and 5 twelfths have different denominators, so they're unlike fractions. Now we're going to look at how to add or subtract like fractions. What we do is, if we have two fractions with the same denominator, like this, both with the denominator of b, when we add these two fractions, we'll get the same denominator as whatever our common denominator was, and on the top of our fraction, we add the numerators from the two fractions that we started with. Here are some examples. If we want to add 2 sevenths and 4 sevenths, our new denominator will be the same denominator that we had in both of these fractions. And this is very important. It's easy to make the mistake of adding the denominators, but you don't do that. You keep the same denominator as whatever your common denominator was. Where you do add is on the top of the fraction bar. So you take the two numerators from the fractions and add those. So on the top we have 2 plus 4 is 6. On the bottom we have 7. So our sum of the two fractions is 6 sevenths. It works the same way with subtraction. So first we can write our new denominator, which is the same as the denominator that these two had in common. And on the top of our fraction bar, we take our two numerators and do whatever operation was in between, in this case, subtraction. Here we end up with 6 eighths. Now one thing to look out for is that this fraction is not in simplest form. So we would want to reduce this. So we write our prime factorizations of 6, which is 2 plus 2 times 3, and 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. We can cancel out a 2 from each place, and we end up with 3 over 2 times 2, or 3 fourths. This is our final answer. It's in simplified form. Another way to visualize adding fractions or subtracting fractions is to use a number line. This is just like we, what we did with adding and subtracting integers. We can do the same thing since we already know how to graph fractions. Again, if we have the same denominator in each fraction, then these two are like fractions. Since our denominator is 7, we're talking about having 7 equal parts from 0 up to 1. So this picture has 7 equal parts. Then we're go just going to graph each of these, and remember if it's a positive value, then on the graph you go to the right. So we're starting at 0. For 2 sevenths, we're going 2 sevenths to the right, and then we start from there and go another 4 sevenths to the right. And that gets us to our ending point of 6 sevenths. Again, when we are adding or subtracting fractions, when we get the addition or subtraction done, we do have to check and make sure the fraction's in simplest form. If it isn't, then we want to divide out all of the common factors. Here's another example. These two are like fractions since they both have a denominator of 4. So that is going to be our new denominator. Remember again, you don't add the denominators, only the numerators. On the top we have 7 plus 3. That gives us 10 fourths. And again, this one is not in simplest form because 10 and 4 have a factor in common. If we write out the prime factorizations, we see that they both have a factor of 2. If we cross that out, then we get 5 halves, and that is our answer in simplest form. Let's do a few more examples. 
One other thing we have to think about with fractions is if we have a negative. Now a negative with a fraction can go any one of three places. It can go out in front, like this one already is, or it can go with the numerator, or it can go with the denominator. It can be any one of these three places, and you can move the negative around from any one of those three to any other one. In this one, let's rewrite this with the negative on top with the three. Now we have like fractions, so to add these, our denominator will be the same as it was here, 14, and then on the top we have a negative 3 plus 5. If we add those two, we end up with 2. And then again, we always have to check and make sure our, our answer is in simplest form. It isn't because 14 does have a factor of 2. We can cross that off. Remember if we cross out everything, either in the numerator or denominator, we still have a 1 left. This turns out to be 1 7th. All right, here again we have a negative out in front of the fraction. Just to make this easier, let's put it in the numerator with the 6. So that gives us negative 6 over 21 minus 5 21sts. These are like fractions, so we put our 21 on the bottom for our denominator. Then on the top we have negative 6 minus 5. If we take negative 6 minus 5, we end up with negative 11. And 11 and 21 don't have any factors in common, so this is in simplest form. Now you can leave the negative in the numerator with the 11. A little bit more standard way to write this, though, is to put the negative out in front. So you could write your answer either one of these two ways. Finally, in this one, notice that our second fraction has the negative in the denominator with the 5. That makes it look like these aren't like fractions because they don't have the same denominator. But remember, we can move that negative from the denominator either out in front of the fraction or up to the numerator. So let's do that. Let's move it up to the numerator with the 2. Now it looks like we have like fractions because our denominators are the same. So our new denominator would be 5. Then on the top we have negative 1 plus negative 2. That's going to give us negative 3 over 5. And again for our final answer let's write that negative out in front of the fraction. Which gives us negative 3 fifths. Well, we can also do operations with expressions and fractional replacement values with addition and subtraction. Let's just look at a couple of examples here. If we have the expressions x plus y and x minus y, let's evaluate those with some fractional values. So for x plus y, remember we're going to put the parentheses in here. In this first parentheses, we're going to put our replacement value for x, which was 3 fifths. In the second one, our replacement value for y was negative 1 fifth. So let's just write this without the parentheses now. And this negative, again, let's put it upstairs here with the 1. Now we have like fractions since both have a denominator of 5. So our new denominator is 5, and for our numerator we have 3 plus a negative 1. That gives us 2 fifths. And this is already in simplest form. Now for our other expression, x minus y, we replace our x with 3 fifths and our y with negative 1 fifth. Remember when we were talking about 
adding and subtracting integers, we talked about changing a subtraction into the addition of an opposite. We could do that in this case, and the opposite of negative one-fifth is going to be just one-fifth. So we could rewrite this as three-fifths plus one-fifth. Notice how that got rid of all the negatives. And now again we have like fractions, both with the denominator of five, so that's our new denominator. On the top we're just adding three and one to get four-fifths. We can solve problems by adding or subtracting like fractions. Here's an example. If Cory read two elevenths of her book on Friday, three elevenths of her book on Saturday, and two elevenths of her book on Sunday, what part of her book has she read? Well, really we're looking for the total of these three fractions, which means we want to add. We want to find the sum of two elevenths, three elevenths, and two elevenths. Notice that all three of these are like fractions because they all have the same denominator. And we can actually do this all in one step. We know that these are all like fractions, so we're going to add all three of them at once. We get our common denominator of 11 on the bottom, then on the top we're adding all three numerators together. So 2 plus 3 plus 2 is 7. Our denominator is 11. That means that Corey has read 7 elevenths of her book. In the next section, we'll be talking about adding unlike fractions. In order to do that, we have to turn them into like fractions we have to find a way to write them so that they all have the same denominator. What we'll do is look for the smallest number that's the least common multiple of all of the denominators that we're looking at. So our, our LCD, or our least common denominators of a list of fractions, is the smallest positive number that's divisible by all the denominators in the list. And this would also be the least common multiple of the numbers in the denominators. Let's look at how we would actually do this. We'll start with an example of two fractions, 5 twelfths and 5 eighteenths, and go through the two steps to find the least common denominator. Step one is to write each denominator as a product of primes, the prime factorization. So for 12, Our prime factorization is 2 times 2 times 3. And for 18, we have 2 times 9, so our prime factorization is 2 times 3 times 3. Step 2 is to take each factor that was in our prime factorizations and write it down the greatest number of times it appears in any one prime factorization. Let's look at the 2 first. The 2 was a factor in both of these, but here it appeared twice. That's the greatest number of times it occurred. For our LCD, we're going to write it down twice. The other factor that occurred was 3. Here it only occurred once, but here it occurred twice. So for our LCD, we're going to write it down twice. If we multiply and get the product of these values, that will be our LCD. So we have 4 times 3 times 3, which is 12 times 3, which is 36. That means our LCD is 36. All right, let's find the LCD of 7 thirtieths and 6 thirty-fifths. Again, all we do is find our prime factorizations. For 30 we get 2 times 3 times 5 and for 35 
we just get 5 times 7. Now we'll look at all the factors that occurred anywhere in this list and write them down. For the 2, it only occurred once, right there, so we just write it down once. The 3 also only occurred once, so we write it down once. For the 5, it occurred in both factorizations, but the most number of times it occurred was once, so we still only write it down once. And the 7 only occurred in the 35, so we just write it down once. And if we multiply this all out, this gives us our LCD. We have 6 times 5 times 7 is 30 times 7, which gives us 210. That's our LCD. Now for these two, we'll find the least common multiple of two numbers, which is the same thing we're doing with our denominators. So for 10 and 12, again, we're just doing prime factorizations. So 10 is 2 times 5, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. Then let's look at our factor of 2. It occurs twice here in the 12, so we have to write it down twice. 5 only occurs once there in the 10, so we write it down once, and 3 occurs once right there. So here's our LCD. It gives us 4 times 5 times 3, which is 20 times 3, and that gives us 60. So there's our least common multiple. Finally, the least common multiple of 30, 20, and 50. This time we have three different numbers, but we do the same thing. So for 30, we have 2 times 3 times 5 for our prime factorization. 20 is 4 times 5, so we end up with 2 times 2 times 5. And for 50, we would have 2 times 25 and our prime factorization ends up being 2 times 5 times 5. So now let's look at all of our factors. The first one that turned up was 2. We've got two of them here in this one, so we have to write it down twice. Then we have a 3 that only occurred the one time. And the only other one that we came up with was 5. And notice that it happens in all three of these, but here it occurs twice, so we would write it down twice. Let's multiply this out and see what our least common multiple turns out to be. And we end up with 300. So that's our least common multiple for all three of those numbers is 300. What we want to do eventually when we find our least common de denominator is to write an equivalent fraction that has that denominator. Remember in the last section, we saw that you can multiply both the numerator and denominator of a fraction to get an equivalent fraction, and that's exactly what we want to do. So let's write a fraction equivalent to 4 ninths that has a denominator of 18. What we're looking for is what we multiply times 9 to get the denominator we want, which is 18. So the question is, what's this factor? Well, 9 times 2 is 18, so we would want to put a 2 in there. That means if we're going to multiply the denominator by 2, then we would also want to multiply the numerator by 2. That will give us an equivalent fraction. So on the top, we'll have 4 times 2 is 8, and on the bottom, we'll have 9 times 2 is 18. So here's our equivalent fraction. Same thing down here, we just want to fill in the number that goes in the numerator if we want a fraction that's equivalent to 5 halves that has a denominator of 6. So again, we're thinking, what do we multiply 2 times to get 6? Well, that would be 3. So that means we have to multiply the numerator times the same thing. So whatever we come up with to multiply in the denominator, we have to multiply the same thing in the numerator. And 5 times 3 is 15. Our equivalent fraction is 15 sixths.